a presentation so you get to know me. Like, who's this random lady? Yes, I did have my uh, flat out of heels, but I've been an entrepreneur now 23 years. Um, I founded six companies. I sold one. I'm in the process of selling one. I have a patent on a vending machine that dispenses um, multiple types of products. So I got my patent in 2020. Um, but always I've just like been a lover of us, like uh, us, black and brown, black people, African people. Um, so I also studied, I went to school for information technology, but I also always was sliding in like African, African-American history. So that was my minor and my passion since I was a young person, just really in search of who I am and where I come from. You know, I'm a black American. So it's always, we always on search of like, where are our roots? And so I've been traveling the world. I'm now at, since I made this presentation, I've hit two more countries. So I'm at 34 countries now. And I've been. Ghana, it was a 400 year um, commemorative of when the first um, enslaved Africans reached the shores of North America. And so we, they said, come back, you're the return. And I felt like it was a good time to explore Ghana and the possibilities. I had a wonderful time in 2019. It was just, I mean, it did. I, it just felt like home. Your your you mood is not yeah okay perfect. I'm sorry. I'm in a co-working space. So when Claudia said I'm a nomad, she did not lie. I'm on a road trip from California to Ohio. I'm in Mississippi. Okay, so my life is really crazy. Um, but going back to where it left off, um, Ghana really did feel like home. I've been to a lot of countries, but it never really felt that in the way that it felt. So I knew I wanted to engage with Ghana long term. So I started out by investing because I'm an investor myself. So I've invested in multiple, over 15 startup companies and real estate and stocks and all kinds of things. But okay, let me invest in Ghana first to see if, um, you know, the, the temperature, let me just try it. So I invested 25,000 into a startup in Ghana in 2020, and they're still doing really well. So that gave me confidence in Ghanaians as far as doing business. And as far as investing in the country, knowing my money could be sent to Ghana, knowing it wouldn't be just, you know, scammed or vanished. So I felt good about that. Um, I knew I wanted to move to Africa my whole life. And then after my daughter graduated and did, you know, her time in university, I felt like it was a good time to move. So I moved to, to Ghana in December 2022. Um, quickly after, not too long after I started really just digging in and seeing, okay, where can I start to invest now before the prices get too crazy? And I came across a project um, called the Pan-African Village in Asebu. We lost her again, guys. Give me one second. Claudia, are you on the line? I just want to make sure. Yeah, she's going to switch over. Perfect. She's going to switch over and come right back. Thanks, guys. We appreciate your patience. Well, I'm really sorry. I'm in a co-working space. I have all the bars. So I, I don't know why it's, it's kicking me off right now. So please bear with me. I will definitely make sure we get through this. Um, and maybe that's God's way of telling me to, like, wrap up the beginning. 
Okay. Um, uh, I forgot where I left off, but, oh, I bought the land. People kept asking me, can I help them? And from being a business owner for, at this point, 23 years, I said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll start consulting and helping vet projects and helping um, us find land and apartments in Ghana like I did for myself just to make sure that we are safe and protected and nothing happens. So that's what I've been doing since um, April 2023 is selling property and land in Ghana and Rwanda. And then I worked full time for a Ghanaian developer from November to April launched a project with them called The Address. We sold out. I, it did amazing. And then I decided to go back on my own as a consultant because I needed more inventory. So I needed more. And when I worked for them, I only could sell their projects and they just didn't have any more units for me to sell. So in April, I decided to branch back out. I spent the past couple of months really vetting new opportunities. So this is my first presentation sharing the new projects that are coming up in Ghana. So um Again, thank you for your time. Here's my why. Claudianne mentioned about her great, great, great grandkids, and I feel the same. I want to be the great, great grandmother that brought the family back to my one and only child. So, you know, everything I do is just for, for that legacy. And this is our land. I have a banana plantation in Rwanda, and this is our land in Ghana. Um as you probably know, because you wouldn't be here if you didn't, Ghana is very hot right now. Uh, it's been all in the news and the media as far as for year of the return, which that's why I came back was the year of the return. Ghana just was announced as the second safest country in Africa. The number one is Rwanda. So, you know, I'm put, planting my seeds in those places. If you saw the most recent Super Bowl commercial filmed in Makola Market, one of the largest markets in Ghana, that was during the Super Bowl. Of course, everybody's heard of After a Future, this huge festival and concert that goes on every December that's getting bigger and bigger, bringing tons of people to Ghana. It gets insane. I think eventually they're going to kick kick them out like they did in Miami and said, it's not you, it's us, because I mean, it gets crazy, like very, very, very packed. And then as you see here, a lot of Black Americans are moving to not only Ghana, but all over the continent to just get rid of all the things, get away from all the things that we've been experiencing. So now is the perfect time. It's not too late. It always feels like it's too late when you hear about things, but you're still right on time. This boom in tourism has definitely impacted the economy and travel. And I want to highlight a few things because it really affects uh, investors who are in the real estate sector because they're wondering who's going to be renting these properties that you buy. So I want to highlight that. It, since 2022, so these are the numbers for 2022. The new numbers haven't come out. I'm sure they're even larger now at this point. But you see the top three traveler markets to Ghana are USA, Nigeria, and Britain. So these are advanced developed markets. So these people are coming from these countries like ours. We're used to certain standards of hotels, accommodations, restaurants, service. So Ghana now has to adapt to the influx of travelers and tourists who are, who are used to a different cultural standard expectation of certain things, amenities and, and houses and things like that. And they really weren't set up for that. So if you can see here where it says accommodation for visitors, only 32% of people who travel to Ghana actually stay in a hotel. The rest of them, as you see, are staying in private homes, meaning could be an Airbnb. Mainly it's an Airbnb. Then a guest house, which are people that set up the small bed and breakfasts, maybe five bedroom um guest house for people to stay in and then corporate housing so this large bulk here this um 60 percent represents where people are staying and there's still not enough housing to accommodate all the people that are coming to ghana for the short term or long term and want a certain standard and quality of living they want ac they want um you know ac ac because a lot of places don't have c and have ac certain types of bathrooms, certain types of um, the way we like to live. So the Ghanaians and expats are coming and really investing in more condos, more apartments to accommodate these guests. So this is why investing in um, apartments is a really great investment at this time, specifically studio and one bedroom apartments as they do the highest volume and turnover in this market. Sharing some statistics. You know, we can see what we can what we can trust, but I did a lot of research to seeing where the economy is projected to grow. And of course, like I said, the influx of tourism 
tourist embassies engaging across uh, just really it's been a boom um real estate market projected to reach 458.5 billion this year but the main sector if you I want to point out is residential real estate 389.1 billion because as I said people are building new things and building new projects to accommodate the shift. And it is a huge shift. Um, I will tell you, Ghana fundamentally is about 20 years behind us in America. It may look like um, it, we're on par, you know, as far as you can get, you can live a great lifestyle there, but it, it's still such a good time to get in on some of the developments and the way that the country is um, starting to change. So they're definitely behind us in technology, of course, and a lot of like the the first smart home just got built um in three years ago. So, you know, there's still a lot of opportunities and they're starting to bring those into the real estate sector. So I want to mention that in the past, the Ghanaian culture was more you get a compound, you have a big compound, your whole family lives on that compound. You'll build three, four houses and everybody will live on this huge family compound and you don't sell it. You know, you don't flip this. You don't move up. You don't move out. They keep their land forever. They pass it down and they don't really care too much in the past about amenities and things. They have their own family compound. But as Ghanaians started to move around the world, uh, their kids are being educated in America and the UK. They're traveling, of course. They're all over and they're starting to bring those different cultures and expectations that we have there to Ghana. So now they're wanting gated communities and they're wanting amenities and swimming pools and gyms and playgrounds as a part of these communities that didn't really exist. The first communities of this sort just came out in the 90s. So it's still a fairly new um, concept, but now it's even more and more. So again, the boom of just building modern accommodations, building communities, the houses were massive, huge estates. Now they're building much smaller European style flats so it's it's a big it's a big shift in even what the locals are looking for. Here's a couple of things that you just need to know in general about buying in Ghana. So this always makes my American friends a little confused, but it's called a land lease. So when you get your um, when you buy a property, or in our case, we're talking about apartments, you'll get a lease. And that lease is for 50 years and um, because we're non-citizens of Ghana. Uh, Ghanaians can do 99 years. After the lease is expired, then you just, well, before it expires, you just renew it. I would like to um, compare this lease to your property taxes. So you're an American, you own a home. You really don't own it, even if it's paid off. You're leasing it because if you do not pay your property taxes to your state, they will take your house. And that's the same thing as in Ghana. It's just instead of paying this annual tax to keep your land or keep your home or be able to domicile in your state, it's every 50 years and you'll just pay this lease renewal. They do not come kick you off. They're not going to take it away. It is yours. It's in your name. But the language is lease. Same as in Rwanda, same as China and other markets that I've experienced. So please just understand you know, the difference between the U.S. and Ghana is you will never get kicked out of your home. That is a fact. They don't they don't come and take, you know, unless you have a bank loan, which is very rare. But um, as far as these, you, there's no tax lien sales. There's nobody's coming and taking people's houses. You know, they come knock on your door. They want to get your lease renewal. It's, it's pretty affordable. The only freehold land, meaning you own it without ever getting a lease, the only freehold land available is granted to Ghanaians. And from my understanding, that that land is long gone. No one does no one does that. They'll lease it for 100 years, but they will not sell you a freehold land. They keep it in their family forever. Um, property taxes range from 0.5% to 1%, um, depending on the classification in the area. In your case, and, and what, what I'm going to be talking about today, you don't have to worry about the taxes because the building will handle those taxes. In most cases, they handle those taxes as a part of your fees, and they're very nominal, and they'll communicate that with you, but it's very low. I mean, anybody I've talked to, it's been well under $1,000, so it's nothing that you have to really be um, worried about. People ask about financing. Um, it exists. They have diaspora mortgages, but as you see here, Here's some interest rates. That int those interest rates were in February when I made this presentation. Twenty nine percent interest rates. It's just just crazy. I went to the bank, just asking and doing research about mortgage loans, and that ranges between fourteen percent and um, 
25% for a mortgage. So nobody does that. It's very rare. Ghanaians pay cash for everything. It's a cash society, something that I had to definitely get adjusted to. There's no such thing as a credit score. It's just, can you afford it? Yes or no, pay cash is yours. Um, and then if you're thinking about things like HOA, common area maintenance, well, you know, the things that we pay to be a part of communities and apartments, yes, Ghana has that as well. And it ranges between 100 to $300 a month. Maybe in the more luxury sector, it could be up to maybe 500. I haven't seen that, but um, you know, in the next couple of years, it could go there with inflation. I have to t share with you that people do get scammed a lot. People get scammed in Ghana. So it's just so important to just do the diligence. You know, a lot of us watch YouTube. We get very emotional, get very excited, watch Instagram. You know, we just want to just, oh, yes, I want to buy land in Ghana. It's $2,000 or, you know, it happens. And as you see, this whole side of my screen is just screenshots about scams from just everywhere. I just put Ghana land scam. And so it's all the time litigation and issues about scams because most of the time, nine times out of 10, people do not do their own research. They do not go down to the lands condition. They do not do their land searches. They they just take people's word for it. And that's what happens. So just bottom line, it's a credible place to do business. You can definitely make money as an investor. You can definitely not get scammed, but you must make sure that you do your due diligence as with anything that you would do in the United States, do that in Ghana. All right, after that, now I'm going to get into a couple of opportunities. So I will tell you, I'm not I'm not a real estate agent. I don't even really consider myself like a broker. I'm a consultant, and I go out and I really dig deep and vet projects, um, meet with developers, dig into their portfolio, their work, you know, really go visit all their sites, see what they've done before. And it's my, it's my passion to advise uh, diasporans on, what is worth buying, what's credible, what developers you can work with. Since 2023, I started doing this in April and I really started selling in May. I've sold about 3.5 million in real estate since then, primarily um, apartments. You know, the average is about $120,000. And then some land, I've sold 55 plots of land in Ghana and then I've sold a hotel to a group of American investors. So I have a lot of experience in this short time. And, um, you know, I only sell things that I believe in from people that I believe in and I like and I vet it. So I I'm going to share two opportunities with you because these are the two that I really, um, that I feel like, you know, are worthwhile right now. There's a lot of things for sale. There's a lot of new developments in Ghana. If you come to visit, you'll be overwhelmed with people building and that's because Ghana has a lot of land. Everybody owns land and everybody wants to be a developer now. But I think it's very important when you're building, when you're buying from a developer, that you understand their track record and what they've done. So these two are the ones that I'm highlighting now. And, um, you know, I just finished selling out another project. It was really great. And it I sold about 15 units to Americans and it's it's breaking ground in July. So this developer I want to focus on is Gold Coast Developers. This is the first one. It's a fairly newer company in Ghana. And normally, I, if you haven't been in business 10 years, I don't want to deal with you. But they've been only around for about four years. But the reason I really like this company is because of the founder, Neil Oku. I really like him. I've spent a lot of time with him. But he was born in the United States. And he's Ghanaian, but he was U.S. born. And then his parents moved him back to Ghana, and he grew up and went to school in Ghana, and then he went back to America and completed university. And then he worked on Wall Street for 12 years as an investment banker, so he really understands money and finance. And I appreciate that because um, there's like a Ghanaian way of doing business, and it's very different than our way of doing business. That's been an adjustment for me. So I like to work with people that understand how Americans and Western people like us, how we think, how we move. So Neil, he's, you know, born and bred in the U.S., but he has, you know, obviously he's gotten in and has a deep connection there. So it's best of both worlds with him. So I like his company and I like his developments that he's completed recently. So they've completed one development, sold out. I visited it called Forster Park. Here is what it looks like. I love the design. Um, it's just very beautiful on the inside. They Those were expensive, honestly, for Ghana. And I'm sometimes very shocked at the prices, but these went for... I think seven hundred to eight hundred thousand for these 
four bedroom townhomes. They sold completely out and they're renting because I was trying to get one and they're renting for 4000 to 7000 a month. Can you believe that? $7,000 a month in Accra, Ghana in Cantonment. But their primary audio market are embassies and business people. So Accra has a lot of embassies, a lot of conferences. So they will come and pay up, you know, leases for two years. And so, you know, they have that um, network. And I like that as well, because if you invest with Gold Coast developers, they can help connect you with that network they have of tenants for your property, which is important. As an investor, you want to make sure that your property is going to be occupied and you have someone that can, you know, manage it to get your returns. So that's a little bit about them. Um, there's a lot of links and information and interviews that I can share uh, with you. So this is just like an intro. And then if you decide that you're interested in more information, possibly to purchase, I will send you lots of videos to watch and just things you can really dig in. Um, but I've spent a lot of time getting to know Neil and I do trust this will, this new project that they're doing is going to be delivered. So the project now, now selling off plan, this is going to be delivered uh, summer 2026, this phase two. It's called the Heritage 100. Phase one is in progress and I will send a video. It's it's built, but they're just, you know, finishing it up. And now they're moving into selling phase two. So I feel good about, I know they're going to deliver because they've already sold. They started selling in 2022. They built the building. I've been in it and they're delivering it next summer. And then now they're building another, they're starting breaking ground next month on phase two, which they own the whole entire block. They're actually renovating the entire neighborhood. I have videos um, of the actual real neighborhood. I have drone footage of the neighborhood. So all these things you can see, um, what's your, you know, the surrounding area, but it's in Livoni, which is a very nice and upscale neighborhood. They took their designs to the um, African Property Awards in London, and they won, as you see, they have these four awards for design, architecture. Um, it just, you know, that's a prestigious award to get. And um, they really demonstrated the their attention to detail and their quality. And I think it's because from Neil just having that American background. So again, this is this is what the project looks like overall. I do have videos I can share, just can't do it on this. Phase one, I've been there, it's built. We're moving over to this building that this is the one that I'm focused on selling right now. Right now for the early release, we're only releasing studios and one bedrooms. I begged them to give me some pre some units to pre-sell they have and at some really good prices um, this is what the balconies look like so you know you come out it's a it's a green building edge certified i think it's the only edge certified apartment in ghana um right now it's not that easy to get that um that that status but they really double down on using sustainable materials and doing as much as they can to just um use the materials have the plants everywhere the gardens um, natural tiles, they're using different kinds of clay works, different types of um, materials made in Ghana. They also, I like this because this is the first development I've ever seen that has a really target and focus on the expat community, diaspora and community. So this is here, I don't know if you can read it, but they talk about um, things that they're offering specifically for the diaspora in their building. So in the actual building, there's an office that will help you with your government ID services, business registration, DNA testing, language training, tourism, transportation, shipping. So imagine all that you need to get adjusted in Ghana is in your in the actual building. So as an investor, when you have your guests or tents coming from different countries, they don't have to go all around trying to, how do I get a Ghana card? How do I get a SIM card? How do I register a business? What do I do? How do I take a tour? It's in the building. So I like that um, because it's just an, an amenity that you really can, um, I feel like, capitalize on with your with your tenants. Here's some of the amenities. Um, they say the pool, spa, cinema, library, rooftop gardens, uh, wellness center. They have EV chargers, car wash, playground, co-working spaces, restaurant, rooftop bar, a cafe, an art gallery in a very, very beautiful, beautiful lobby. Uh, I've, I've been in there. It's not finished, but it is very, very nice. 
this is what it'll look like. I, they have the winding staircase. Um, the aesthetic is just very beautiful. It does have a sea view. If you get high enough, like on the seventh and eighth floor, you can see the ocean. Um, so it's not too far away from from beaches. Accra beaches are not the best beaches in Ghana, but um, there are beaches, you know, and it, it's it's there's some very nice new places popping up. So these are the units that we have. I'm telling you, there will be other units released later, but they won't be at this early price, and they will not. You know, these are the ones that are releasing now, selling, and then they'll release they'll release more, but they will not be at this this price. I'm gonna zoom in a bit just so you can see. Now I will tell you, they're small. This is more like um this phase, more like hotels, so more like Airbnb guests or people that are like an individual um. Like somebody like me, I rent a one bedroom apartment in the city. So this is something that I would I would take. So the studio, so they have something called a suite, a studio and a one bedroom. A suite is like a just like a hotel, a hotel room. It's uh three hundred well, is it it's like a little over three hundred square feet. So it's a hotel room. So you can buy a suite and you can rent that suite out every night like you're renting a hotel. Then they have a studio which is a slightly larger, a um, little over 400 square feet. And I will tell you in the beginning, these sizes surprised me because I'm American and I like space, but they've really moved over towards the, um, like I said, the um, European flat style of building because that's a lot of the, the tra travelers don't spend too much time inside. So the, everybody now on the market is building smaller rooms. So this is standard. A lot of my clients are taking it back like, oh, 400 square feet. And I'm like, yeah, that's how they're building. But the one bedroom is 700 square feet, a little over 700 square feet. So you definitely get more room in the one bedroom. And again, these floor plans, you get a lot more in-depth, a lot more details, get to study the floor plans, see the floor plans, see the brochure. But I'm just giving you the overview today. I'm going to pause really quick to see if there's like any questions that like popped up. Okay, I'm seeing, wow, wow, that's expensive, that's expensive. Yeah. Everyone is usually shocked. It's not cheap. I was shocked when I moved there. I thought I was about to be going to Africa and living like they tell you on YouTube. It's expensive. It felt like moving to L.A. I'm going to be honest. It felt like moving to L.A. But this is the thing about Ghana in Africa. It's better to be an owner than be a renter. In you make off your you can write off all these things, your office, you can write off your your lease as a business owner. You know, you don't have to worry about paying all of the fees associated with being a homeowner because being a homeowner can be overwhelming. We know this. But in Ghana, you buy an apartment for eighty, ninety thousand dollars and then you rent it out for two thousand dollars a month. It just doesn't make sense. It's, it it just doesn't make sense to rent when you have when you can buy at such a low price. So, I mean, comparatively, right? So now I found myself spending $24,000 for rent last year because I was paying $2,000 a month. And I could have, you know, that's a quarter of the money that I could have bought a whole apartment for. So it changed my mindset. And so people that go in and buy as an investor, they see the upside really good. But people who come in trying to come to the market as a renter, it's a shocking thing to see what these prices look like. So these are the off-plan. So off-plan pre-construction, that's what they call it. Um, Julia, sure. I, you have a question? Yes, please. Jeff? Wait, hold on. Someone asked a question. Um, you can, Jeff, you can, you can ask the question. Your hand are is you, raised. Are you, are you doing it? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Awesome. Thank you. This is a this phenomenal. I'm Ghanaian, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, okay. um, I saw you shaking your head. So I'm like, okay, he feels me. Like, he feels me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, the rents on, so say you acquire this house for 180000 How much rent can you get on the studio? Um, That's the, the coming up in the next part okay, of my presentation. Okay, okay, my bad. Okay, you got it. My bad. Someone, I do have a question. I got you. I got you. I got you. How yes. close is the nearest airport to the area? Yes, yeah, so Laboni, the airport's about 14, 15 minutes away. 
I spend a lot of time in Livonia. It has all the good restaurants. It's a walkable neighborhood, which is not many walkable neighborhoods in the city. Um, but Livonia's nice, you know, and even when, you know, Jeff can tell you that. He's kind of in. Livonia, Cantonments, Ridge, Roman Ridge, uh, Airport Residential. Sure. These are the neighborhoods in Accra that are uh, the upscale neighborhoods. Um, Livonia has a lot of the embassies there. So that's why the rent's very high. Cantonments has a lot of the embassies there. So the U.S. Embassy is there, and it's all of them. All of them are between Laboni, Cantonment, and Ridge. And so the prices for real estate are a lot more expensive. But again, these come, they're coming in and renting. So as an owner in these neighborhoods, you are at an advantage for long term. And one thing, too, the, the, the real estate prices in Ghana, the market, it does not depreciate. In America, our things fluctuate based on the economy, based on interest rates, but nobody's property is depreciating and the value of their homes are not going down in Ghana. It doesn't work like that. It's worked. It's based on demand and the demand is not going down. So the continuing to see an increase in property values at such a rapid rate, it's it's very surprising. So I'll get into more. I have more uh, statistics after this part. Um. So these are the prices for the off plan. The ones that are scratched out are sold. This was just released last week. They've already sold out 100% of phase one. Um, I take that back. They have three units left, but they're in the like six and seven hundred thousand range. So these are like an American diaspora and investors. You prefer studio one bedrooms, lower price points because you're not going to live here full time. So that's what I always like to highlight with you. So this is what is this is what's available. This is the actual price. So you can see it ranges from eighty six thousand to one hundred and 23 for suites, which suites is a room. A studio is a bigger room. And then the one bedrooms, 700 square feet, 180 to 189. And again, I'll, I'll go into some more prices so you can see just how much you can get off of that. The next project is, hasn't even launched. I am, this is my exclusive project that I'm working on with the chief of Cape Coast. He's a recently installed chief. Um, he's a global businessman, owns a military company in the UK. Um, he's very, very engaged with the community. He has done so much to build up Cape Coast. Cape Coast is the former capital of Ghana. It's about three and a half hours from Accra. That's where I actually live. I have a house in Cape Coast, and then I also have an apartment in Accra. But Cape Coast, I love it. It's it's developing fast. It's a great place to invest. You know, everybody wants to um, invest when it's really hot, but you pay more. So Accra, when you want those immediate returns, close to the airport, the apartment in Laboni is great. If you're looking for something that um, lower price, long-term development, it's Cape Coast. But this is a beachfront property. So I'm showing you these pictures here of are of the resort, excuse me, our resort, restaurant and entertainment center that he just built and opened last month in Cape Coast. And he's built four up new apartment four new um office towers in downtown Cape Coast and he's building apartments. So he's just really doing a lot of development, but he's doing 12 oceanfront uh chalets and apartments. And a lot of um diasporans ask me about oceanfront and I just don't I never in the a lot of times London, which is not you know, it's not clear. People are scamming. So I just stay away from it. But this is the chief. I know he owns it free and clear. Um, and now he's going to be selling them. So either you can buy them and own it and rent it, or you can do a fractional ownership model where you buy the apartment, but you only can use it yourself two weeks out of the month, the two weeks out of the year. The rest of the time you commit that your unit can be used for 100% rentals and he'll run it as a hotel and share a profit with you. So it's just another creative way that they're now um, raising money for hotel and project developments is by giving investors fractional ownership instead of you buying it outright and it's yours, you own it with the developer. And this is a great way to, you know, to invest and get those guaranteed returns and not have to really worry about it. So I don't even have any pictures of this one yet because we're finalizing it. I'm kind of the consultant on the, not kind of, I am the consultant on the design. And so he had an initial design and I said, uh, the aspirants are not going to feel this. We need more windows. We need more. There's things that we like if we're going to have beachfront. 
So I'm tightening up those things. And so when you get the form that Claudian and Crystal will send to you, it'll just ask you, are you interested in the Laboni apartments, in the Cape Coast beachfront, or both? And then I'll send that information specifically once the floor plans and everything are completed. But this is going to be early release. I will have the ability to give you like a first dibs discount on these. And so um, I'm excited because this is like the first beachfront apartments being built in Cape Coast, period. He just, he has the only public pool in Cape Coast. Fun fact. So it's really, really developing, but it's a very, very beautiful, beautiful area. Here's some sneak peeks of some concepts for these. And uh, the prices we're working on, studios, which studios, not suites. You know, I'm pushing for studios at least being 400 square feet, maybe a little larger. I like a little larger, you know, for, for the beachfront. One bedroom starting at 120, two bedrooms starting at 200. So um, again, it will be either functional ownership or, um, or ownership. Let me see if there's any questions. Are there nearby hospitals, healthcare facilities? So in Laboni, yes, very much so. Hospitals, schools. Um, I mean, it's a very, it's a very, very uh, busy and popular and nice neighborhood. If you fill out the information form, you'll get an email from me with a lot more information about the neighborhood, about the, about just everything, you know, it's a lot that I couldn't cover on this call for sake of time, but I will go deep in. Um, someone asked about easy loan. So I'm not a developer. So there's plenty of things being built in everywhere in Ghana, but I just go and pick out the projects that I feel will have the best returns that'll deliver on time that will be, that will do business in a way that Western people like us can handle. Because I'm telling you, you guys can't all handle the way Ghanaians do business. And I I can, but patience is required. So I try to just find people that work with Americans or who were educated in America so that you can get the level of communication and service that you are used to because it's very different. So the projects that I've seen, though, may I have liked the projects, a lot of other red flags existed where I'm not comfortable presenting them to you. But if you go to Ghana, you will get pitched a hundred different developments to buy into. I'm serious. And I've visited them, many, many of them. Um, okay, so someone asked question, are there no more apartments on the upper floors? Will we have to worry about squatters? There's no, no, no. There's no such thing as squatters, okay? Somebody in your property, go snatch them out. Like, <laughs> literally. <laughs> No, none of these things are like this. Um, it's very um, owner friendly. Okay, you know, Ghanaians they're not playing about their property. I wish you would try to squat. <laughs> I dare you. Okay. Um, let me see the next question. I think okay, we're good. She she dropped the interest form in the chat. So um, yes, please click that if you're interested. So here's a couple more things you were asking about, and I have even more information coming so the market snapshot real estate today i looked up this last week what are the prices for apartments going right now and um, obviously i work with developers and agents so i just got the most recent what the going rate is in the city so this these prices are for the city city meaning laboni ridge cantonment airport residential those are pretty much the areas um Oh, Osu. How could I forget Osu? A studio apartment, you're going to pay about 1200 to 1800 Could even pay more, but 1200 to 1800 is safe. A one-bedroom, you're going to pay 1800 to 2500 a month. These are U.S. dollar prices. Everything is priced in USD. Two-bedroom, you're going to go from 2000 to 3000 I have seen two bedrooms in cantonments for $4,000. Paradise courts, actually. So, you know, this is a range. It gets going on the higher. I don't really see it on the lower. I've never seen a two-bedroom under 2000 before. And then a three-bedroom from 2500 to 5000 But I went and checked out that Forrester Park, and that was 7000 So, again, it can go um, it can go high. I haven't seen it go very low. They blame us. I, I've been on a couple of group chats and they blame us diasporans for driving the price up. But I just think it's because, um, you know, a lot of people are coming from around the world. 
I do. I am happy to see Ghanaians getting to take advantage of their wealth of land and resources and them capitalizing on their property instead of, you know, other races and coming in and taking um, all of their properties and their land. That's not the case. Ghanaians are running their country very much so. They own their land. And, you know, they definitely, there was colonization, but they don't have their land. I mean, the, the Ghanaians have their land. And I love, I love to see that. Um, it's very inspiring to be around them and the way that they operate and how they own land and how they have generational wealth and how, you know, they plan and save. And it's really inspired me. Anyways, back to the thing. Um, according to uh, Nubio, the rental properties yield about 19 to 22%. When I work for DevTraco, they told us to always tell our our clients it's a rental, um, it's an ROI of 8 to 12% just to be, you know, reasonable. But I've seen more. I've seen 20 to 100% returns on um, on real estate very quickly. So when Ghanaians talk about a flip, like they don't even talk the words flip, but in our terms of a flip, Flipping is buying properties off plan, buying apartments off plan and selling them right when they open up. That's why the projects sell out so fast. I have investors that come in, buy five, 10 apartments. Then they wait till the development is ready to be launched or launched and they sell them back to people who want them because they're sold out. Because people can't wait two and three years for a project to be built. They want it now. And so the flip is buying off plan and selling as soon as it hits the market. I have seen investors literally buy a apartment for ninety thousand, turn around and sell two fifty. Another person I saw buy one for two hundred, sold it for four hundred just back in January. American lady, she lives in LA. She bought a one bedroom den for one twenty, and as soon as it opened up, she sold that for two hundred. So that is how they're making the the flips per se. So if like you are looking at what I'm showing you, and you're like, you know, I don't know if I want to live in Ghana, but I want to make some money and, you know, somewhere to put my money in the next two or three years. Get apartment off plan. Wait it out. Why it's being built. The price keeps going up. Every time they put a new price sheet out, the prices are more expensive. And then when it opens up in two, three years, of course, inflation, the prices from 2024 are not going to be the same in 2026. And then there you are, you know, there, there's a chance to sell a unit. Phase one of this, of the heritage has been sold out. I really wanted to try to get some units in there because it's going to be ready next summer. But people bought those out in 2022 and 2023. A lot of people ask, can I be a citizen? I want dual citizenship. I want to be a citizen. Can can I get, be a citizen if I invest in real estate? The answer is no. It's just like any other countries like America. You can't just walk into the U.S. and be like, I'm going to be a citizen if I buy a house. No. They'll take your money, but the only way to really be a citizen is through marriage after three years of being a resident and married to a Ghanaian. Lineage, if your parent or grandparent is Ghanaian, or right to abode, which is being there for seven years and showing and demonstrating that you're contributing to society and as a whole process. And that's why recently you all have seen Americans getting their citizenship on Instagram and things. They've been there for a long time. They've been there for decades, and they're finally getting their citizenship, but they're not just handing out citizenship. You can easily get a residency. So being an investor helps you to be able to get residency. And that's all you really need. You can come and go as you please. You can invest. You can do things. But you don't You don't really need to be a citizen. If you're looking to be a citizen of a country for the purposes of like taxes or something like that, it's not Ghana. There's no laws that really benefit you of being a citizen. There's a book that I read called Nomad Capitalist. And it really breaks down the different countries that you can be get citizenship where it makes sense. It doesn't really make sense to be a citizen. It doesn't give you any benefits. Yes, Stevie Wonder did get his citizenship um, two days ago, a couple of days ago. They actually invited me and I'm, I'm sad I missed it. But, you know, they do that because he's a celebrity. You know, that's it. That it brings visibility to the country. And he's been coming to the country for a long time, and he has done a lot in Ghana that um, people are not aware of. So it's possible, but, you know, it takes time. It, he's been coming there for decades. So just wanted to preface that, that you're not going to just get citizenship. And I don't know if any African country is giving out citizenship like that, but I have a 10-year visa, um, a 10-year visa in Rwanda. That was very easy to get, and I'm finalizing my residency for Ghana. But you need a lot of letters and paperwork and you know, it's not just, it's not easy.
last but not least, I'm doing a retreat. Claudine is coming. We're almost booked. We are booked. But like I put it here because Claudine is coming and you're her, you're her people. So if anybody really is interested in c coming on to the retreat, I will open it up for her guests. So, but it has to, you have to book pretty quickly. If you're interested in information, I can definitely share that with you on the information link that she shared. It's a, it's a, I'm interested in a retreat. If you click yes, I'll send you the information. And then, you know, I'll, I'll extend the deadline a bit because again, Claudine's coming. It'd be a great time for you to experience it with her and with me while we're together. Um, any questions? So yes, complete the form. I'll get in touch with you ASAP. I'm very responsive. I'm very, I'm very engaged. And of course, Claudine and I are partners. So we are going to help you to the fullest. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. This is time to anything that you would like to know.